Hey folks, about five years ago, I started building a lithium ion power wall. It's quite dangerous and quite dubious. Uh, it's got no battery management technology in it at all. And I thought, well, it's probably about time we got into the shed some five years later, found the old lithium ion power wall, which was put to good use for quite a while uh, for lighting and uh, sound systems in the shed. I thought it would be time to pull it out of the shed, have a look at it, and see what kind of condition the batteries are in, and whether or not this mad piece of kit still works. Don't do what I do here, please, for goodness sake. This is just a really dangerous sort of thing to do, but it was a really good fun build project. Going forwards, if you're going to build something like this, do make sure that you install BMSs, battery management circuits, and various other things. Anyway, let's get into it. I have the lithium cells on charge right now and actually we're achieving our optimal voltage which is 12.6 volts fully charged and I'm using a IMAX B6 lithium ion uh, balanced charger although it's not balanced it's just two connections to three separate sets of batteries 4.2, 4.2 and 4.2. Bearing in mind this project is about five or six years old one of the, and it's been sitting out in the shed for a long time. One of the problems that I'm facing is I have a one battery. Hopefully you'll see it there. Yeah, I've got one battery that is reporting in at about 27 degrees. It's getting a little bit warm. And um, so I'm gonna have to disconnect this tiny little fuse wire. Basically what I did is I put tiny little fuse wires to the top of each of these batteries cumulatively. Uh, this still dumps out a lot of current, um, but I thought it would be a good idea to have tiny little fuse wires on each battery, just in case something went wrong with the battery, it would hopefully blow the fuse rather than causing a fire. Uh, I mean, yeah, okay, this thing's not safe as it stands, but um, we've got a battery that's warming up, and one battery that's warming up means... I sit there and passively suck the charge out of all of those batteries slowly but surely because they're all in parallel um, which obviously isn't a good thing but everything else everything else is working quite nicely I'm sitting there at 18 volts but uh, if we come down this side here you'll notice that there's a sudden there's a sudden spike and there it is 20 27 28 degrees centigrade Anyway, uh, right, let's uh, get the soldering iron and disconnect that battery and maybe we can find a replacement for it at some point in the future. Having removed the uh, fuse links to the top of those two batteries, this has been sitting around for a number of weeks now and is happily holding its charge and that battery pack is working quite well it really is quite a scary dangerous thing um but anyway good news is there we go it's now uh supplying my emergency light with 12 volts and everything seems to be working nicely all of that said <laughs> i came across these two uh, i was using these to power the mobility scooter um, oh my goodness, honestly, the stuff that I did in my early years with lithium cells, uh, just, just terrifying. Look in here, so basically what we've got here then is the same sort of thing. At least now we've got uh, some battery holders, some um, plastic battery holders. But ultimately, again, metal bar down the middle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 batteries all paralleled up in one bank and we've got three sets of those banks of batteries in there and not only have we got one of those we've got three of them we've got quite a lot of lithium here um, and none of which is protected by battery management circuits um, so yeah a little bit terrifying considering these are now in my house and not in the shed does it help that i wrote the word danger on these. <laughs> so what's the plan then, Stan? What should we do? I reckon we need to rebuild this. And uh, I've been going through my bag of many BMSs. And I've found the perfect BMS to use. This is the little puppy right here. So if we look at the back of it, then we can see we've got zero volts, 
3.7 volts, which would be the first bank, 7.4 volts, which would be the second bank, and then 11.1 volts, which would be the third bank of cells. So I think the, the least we should do is include a BMS. Perhaps see if we can replace those batteries. Here it is then, folks. Let's get all the battery packs out, prepare ourselves with some new cable. Found a USB-C power delivery unit, so I think we're going to wire that in as well. Let's get everything soldered up, wired up, squared away. Oh, there we go. Three sets of batteries connected to a BMS. In the back of my mind, I'm trying to understand how to get all of this into the box nicely. Are we going to do a decent job of it, or is it going to be dubious? <laughs> okay. Here it is and three banks of batteries all wired into the charge control or the battery management circuit which helps against things like short circuit protection, overcharge, undercharge, all of that kind of stuff. So this circuit manages those battery packs quite nicely for me. Happy days. I've added a little USB-C device here. Uh, this is a USB-C power delivery device. Uh, so it's uh, 100 watt out uh, USB-C power delivery. Everything is now wired into the front here, including the switch and the display. Right, time for the big turn on. <laughs> is it a big turn on? Will it all go bang? Happy days, telling us 12.4 volts. And when we turn it on, we get a blue light on the USB-C charge circuit as well. Yeah, that's all looking like it's sort of working. So now what we've got to do is very carefully and neatly trying to find a way to get all of that back into this box. Well, there we have it. Uh, I think I need to find a little bit more foam just to try and sort of stabilize some of this. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to do with this guy yet. I, I might see if I can build it into the side of the box here uh, or something along those lines. Uh, but for now, it's just going to end up with loads of foam on the top of it and we'll just have to continue to be really careful when we use it because it wouldn't be dubious engineering otherwise would it as i've told you so many times don't do what i do and don't do what i say but there it is not bad that's a lot of capacity that's about that's about 80 amp hours that's about as much as a car battery in a small portable power pack that is relatively light and easy to move around and it has a missile switch ladies and gentlemen thank you ever so much for watching take care have a wonderful week and weekend don't forget thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already cheers and beers folks bye for now